Hi everyone, today I want to talk about how to get started with an index fund portfolio. Today I realize that some of you out there may be more like this guy than these guys, and you might not understand exactly how to get started. You see these stocks, you understand that there is a financial economy, and that you should take your money and invest it, maybe make more money. But how exactly do we get started, and what should you put your money in before you really understand exactly what you're doing? So today, I'm going to explore starting a portfolio from scratch. As always, there will be some jelly at the end, which is something I enjoyed outside of the markets. If you're interested in buying the McLaren LM, go ahead and like and subscribe. It recently sold for $19.8 million, and that's because only five of them were ever sold to the public. They were meant to commemorate the McLaren F1s that won at Le Mans, and it's often considered one of the greatest cars of all time. Keep your goals in the front of your mind. Like and subscribe. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. All right, for this tutorial, I'm going to use M1 Finance. So you would go to m1finance.com, click the Get Started button, click the Sign Up button, open your brokerage account with them, and then you're off to the races. When you're going through the sign up process, they're going to ask you all kinds of questions to verify that it's you. They'll ask for your social security number, some locations that you've been associated with, income level, lots of information to ensure that it's you. So don't be alarmed that they're asking for personal information. This is a financial institution and they have to verify that it's you. So it's for your security and their security. M1 Finance also acts as a bank. They do have a checking account and lines of credit if you're interested in those things, but we're going to focus on the brokerage for today. Also, after you sign up, you need to decide whether this is going to be a taxable account or a retirement account, like an IRA. That really depends on you if you want your money to be accessible. If you put it into a retirement account, it's going to be more difficult to take it out, and you will probably incur some penalties. If you put it into a taxable account, you can always withdraw it at any time but you will also pay more taxes. Once you get in here, it's gonna look something like this. They'll say invest up here, that's to show that it's your investment account. You can call it whatever you want. You won't have any account values here since this is a brand new account, but this is what the layout's generally gonna look like. This is just a visual display of all your sections. They call them slices, so you have all your different slices here, and then it'll track your account value over time. Once you get money deposited, the next step is going to set up a transfer to your invest account. I use the spend account, so I do have a checking account with them. It makes it much simpler to move money straight from M1 Finance Spend over to their invest accounts, but you can do it with an external bank as well. You'll just set up a transfer up here. Next, you need to go to the research section. You click up here for research. It gives you some news articles if you're interested in those. Probably not applicable if you're a brand new investor. So here they have all the different sections if you're trying to buy individual stocks, which I don't recommend unless you are knowledgeable on them. Funds, which is where we are going to go. Pies, you can establish full portfolios here. And then expert pies, they have some established for you that you can just pick and put that pie into work. And then you have a watch list if you're trying to track stocks, but you don't want to buy them right now, or if you want to buy them after they go below or above a certain price, if you're concerned about that, any reason that you would want to track a stock, but not necessarily buy it right now. So if you go over to stocks here, it'll show you the biggest stocks. This is organized by market cap by default. And then you can go over here and pick by sector. Again, that's not what we're going to be doing today. If you want to do research into individual stocks, I have lots of videos for that but that's not what this video is about. So next you're gonna go here to my pies and then you will click create new pie. And then we're gonna go over to funds. We're gonna go down here to equities. And for right now I'm gonna click on domestic. So then we can click on total stock market fund here, Vanguard, VTI, Vanguard S&P 500, Vanguard growth fund, VUG, true value, VTV, and then Vanguard dividend appreciation, VIG. And then we're going to go over to bonds. 
LQD, VCIT. So I'm not seeing VCLT, so I'll go ahead and type that in. Go ahead and add that to the basket. Go back to funds. And then we're going to go to alternatives. This is where we're going to get real estate. So we'll add VNQ and SCHH. And then we'll go ahead and click add on those. So that'll take you here and it'll make everything evenly balanced. So then we'll click edit. So depending on how old you are, this might vary. I'm currently in my late 20s, so I'm still pretty aggressive. My bonds are pretty low. So my largest holding is going to be the Vanguard Growth Fund, followed by the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation, followed by the Vanguard S&P 500. So total, I want bonds to be only about 10%. So let's start there. So we have LQD, VCIT, and VCLT. So between the three of those, I only want those to be 10%. So we'll change this one to a three, change that one to a four, that one to a three, just to make those much smaller. And then between these real estates, I want those to be about 30%. So this one's going to be 20, leave that one at 10. And then VUG, change that one to 20. Five and five here. Then we'll change the VIG to 15 and 15. Before we click save, we want to rename this. Just name it investment. And then we'll call it early retirement for our goals. Then we'll hit save. Then you can see exactly what that looks like by breakdown. If you had invested in this portfolio five years ago, your current return would be 25.9%. To be clear, the 25.9% illustrated is only capital gains. It does not assume that you're going to reinvest any dividends. So if you did reinvest dividends throughout this period, your actual returns would be quite a bit higher the current dividend yield for this portfolio is 2.6 and the expense ratio is a 0.06. So these are all good numbers and it's well diversified and this is a great starting point. If you're a little bit older than late 20s, then you might want to increase the bond holding. And if you're a little bit younger, you can decrease the bond holding. It's really up to you, but usually you assume less risk the later you are in life and a little bit more risk the earlier you are in life. So this portfolio is built for your late 20s, early 30s. Also, you'll notice that I didn't include any international stock or emerging markets stocks. A lot of different portfolios that I've seen include those, but I really don't see the purpose or the returns on those. I know some people think there's potential for better long-term returns. However, I just haven't seen the data to support that. I will put a link to this pie in the description. You can click that link and it'll take you here and you can actually copy and paste this pie into your own portfolio once you sign up with M1 Finance. They will also give you 10 free dollars once you fund the account using that link. Of course, this is all for entertainment purposes. Consult your financial advisor before making any financial decisions. And I cannot guarantee that you will have the same kind of returns as is shown here. And with that, let's get to the jelly. Today's jelly is Jerry Seinfeld's new Netflix special. Jerry is one of the best stand-up comedians to ever do comedy. Obviously, his sitcom is one of the greatest of all time. His stand-up is extremely good, and this special is no exception from his great talent. Here's a little bit of the trailer. You and I know each other on a certain level for many, many years. You know for a fact. I could be anywhere in the world right now. <laughs> now, you be honest. If you were me... Will you be up here hacking out another one of these? It's all things we do to convince ourselves our lives don't suck. And I know that because I know that everyone's life sucks. Your life sucks. My life sucks too. 
perhaps not quite as much. Never feel bad that your life sucks. The greatest lesson you can learn in life, sucks and great are pretty close. You go to a baseball game, you have a hot dog. The hot dog is cold. The bun is not toasted. The vendor is an ex-con in a work release program. You love that hot dog every time. Does it, does it suck? Yes. Is it great? Yes. That's how close they are. So definitely go out and watch that. I thought it was a great special, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it if you enjoy stand-up comedy. And with that, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe so you can catch all of my future videos. And have a great day.